Hi everybody, my name is Anthony Greco. I'm the exhibit director here at the Buffalo History Museum. And as part of our third Friday programming sponsored by m and Bank, what we thought we would do today is take you on a little bit of a tour of what we at the museum consider the largest object in our collection, which happens to be the building itself, the New York State Pavilion, now today's Buffalo History Museum. The New York State Building, or New York State Pavilion, was built in 1901 for the Pan American Exposition, an international fair promoting the history, culture, and achievements of the Western Hemisphere. Designed by Buffalo architect George Carey, the New York State Building was, in fact, the only structure from the exposition that was intended to be permanent. You have to remember that the Pan American Exposition was a fleeting event lasting only six months. Therefore, other buildings at the fair were made of wood and plaster of Paris, these buildings would either be demolished after the Pan Am or travel to different expositions held each year all around the country. The New York State Building, however, was made of marble taken from the quarries of Danby, Vermont. Prior to the fair, the Historical Society and the City of Buffalo pooled their money together to pay for the building with the understanding that after the exposition, it would become the permanent home of the Historical Society which had been founded four decades earlier in 1862. Once the fair ended in November of 1901, the building was slowly turned over to the museum, as was planned, and we've been here for the past 119 years. Throughout the early decades of the 20th century, various additions were made to the museum's landscape, as well as to the museum itself. One example of such an addition is the statue known as the Centaur, which adorns the view from one museum court. Now, if you're coming to the museum, the Centaur is going to be one of the first things you see as you park in our lot. The statue was created by sculptor Charles Carey Rumsey and features a man on a rearing horse. The statue was cast in Paris by H. Ruard in 1929 and again restored in 1995. The statue itself was given as a gift to the museum from Charles Carey Rumsey's son, Charles Carey Rumsey II. Now back to the New York State Building itself, which features lots of little architectural elements that if you come to the museum, we're happy to talk to you about, or you can take a tour of the exterior yourself. So near the top of the building are a series of carvings, a standard feature of Doric architecture. These carvings were sculpted by Edmund Amateus of New York and carved by local sculptor Albert Walters. These panels showcase scenes of Buffalo history on a wide range of subjects. Originally, the board of the Historical Society wanted people to be featured, but Amateus encouraged them to choose events instead. In a letter from George Carey to Amateus in 1927, Carey wrote, I appreciate that events are more interesting and easier to work up of portraiture than men. So, starting from left to right, the first carving features, features Charles Carey Rumsey creating the centaur statue. And then as we move uh, to the right, we see General Daniel Bidwell of Buffalo leading the charge in the Battle of Spotsylvania during the Civil War and the death of Major William Ellis. And finally, the third one on this side features settlers fleeing Buffalo during the War of 1812 when the British burned Buffalo toward the final days of 1813. And as we continue moving on on the front of the building, to the right of the door, we start with Commodore Oliver Hazard Perry at the Battle of Lake Erie during the War of 1812. And then finally on the front, an African-American man and woman are guided by a man with a rifle on the Underground Railroad. Toward the southwest wing of the New York State Building, we see three more carvings that feature influential people and very important events to Western New York history. So moving from left to right, we start with Seneca Orator Red Jacket delivering a speech to the Seneca people. To the right of Red Jacket, we see the opening of the Erie Canal in 1825 in a ceremony known as the Wedding of the Waters. The carving depicts uh, DeWitt Clinton and George Coit and Charles Townsend. And then finally on the southwest corner, we have surveyors Andrew and Joseph Ellicott laying out the streets of Buffalo around 1804. And now moving to the northeast exterior wing of the Buffalo History Museum, there's three more carvings. And again, moving from left to right, first we see 
President Millard Fillmore and the founding of the Buffalo History Museum in 1862. Depicted in the relief are Millard Fillmore, 13th President of the United States, and the first president of the Buffalo Historical Society, addressing the group made up of H.W. Rogers, Orson Miss Marshall, Lewis F. Allen, for whom Allen Street is named, John Chase Lord, and Nathan K. Hall. To, to the right of that, in the middle, we see the 1825 visit of the Marquis de Lafayette to Buffalo, at which time he was given the key to the city. And then finally on the right, we have Wilson S. Bissell, Daniel Lockwood, and Peter Doyle appealing to Grover Cleveland to run for mayor of Buffalo. Bissell would, serve, would later serve as best man to Grover Cleveland's 1886 White House wedding in which he married Buffalo's Francis Folsom. In 1892, when Cleveland was re-elected president for the second time, Bissell would serve as his postmaster general. Now, if you're approaching the Buffalo History Museum from Delaware Park, you'll notice the backside of our building features a very elaborate portico. The building itself was meant to be a replica of the Parthenon sitting atop the Acropolis in ancient Greece. And then sitting atop our portico, we have a statue of one of our nation's most recognizable figures, Abraham Lincoln. The cast bronze statue sits high atop a square marble base. The statue was given to the History Museum in 1902 by the Lincoln Birthday Association. The statue was a posthumous gift from local drugstore owner Julius Francis. Francis attempted to persuade Congress to establish a national birthday for Lincoln's birthday, but failed. So instead, he founded Buffalo, uh, the Buffalo Lincoln's Birthday Association. The front doors of the Buffalo History Museum are a work of art unto themselves. They were gifted to the museum in the early 20th century by Buffalo businessman and Buffalo History Museum board member Andrew Langdon. The doors feature the Muse of History on the door to the left and Ethnology on the right. They were sculpted by R. Hinton Perry in 1900 and weigh a combined weight of 3,900 pounds. History peers through the veil of the past and carries the lamp of knowledge. Ethnology holds a skull in one hand and an arrow, war club, peace pipe, and string of beads in the other.